Well, I'm pleased to be joined here in the Baku World Cup by Samir Patak. Samir is the Global Chess League CEO and one of Tech Mahindra's top executives. Samir, a pleasure to have you here with me. And my first question, we've just gone into the playing hall just five minutes ago. Give me your sensations, your vibes from seeing the players here. Boss, thank you for having me here. I just came out of the play hall and it's a whole different vibe than what Global Chess League was. Um, here, individuals are pitted against individuals. There you had a clear team A versus team B and you could feel that um, players were moving around, looking at games of other players or they keep an eye out on how they are playing. So you can feel two completely different uh, vibes within the chess community. One for a top-notch event like um, FIDE Chess World Cup and then the Global Chess League. It's quite interesting. I'm just loving it. So, uh, the first edition of the Global Chess League was played in Dubai very recently. I would say it's a completely different approach to what uh, FIDE does with the main events, although it's a joint collaboration. Uh, for those who don't know what the Global Chess League is, tell us a, a bit about it and where you find the differences with the normal FIDE chess competitions. So, credit to FIDE that they are open about this idea. It's a joint venture between FIDE and Tech Mahindra, which is part of the Mahindra group. Now, Global Chess League is structured on the format of, say, NBA or IPL in cricket or the English Premier League football. There are six teams, each owned by private organizations or people who are known, they're high net worth individuals uh, and companies that own these teams. Each team has six players, one icon player who's among the stars, people like Magnus Carlsen, Vishy Anand. Then there are two superstar male players, 2700 and above yellow rating two top female players on the same team as male team. So you have 2,400 and above that and one prodigy round, which is 2,600 and above. So each team has six players and each team plays the other in what we call the home and away format. In home is when you play with all whites. So again, that is distinct from what usually in a chess team FIDE tournament takes place. Um, all team, the whole team plays white and the whole team plays uh, black uh, at the same time. And then they have reverse on another day. Interestingly, the team doesn't know if they're playing black and white till half an hour before the game. There's a coin toss to decide if you're going to play white or black half an hour before the game starts. Now, the other interesting thing is how the point system has been devised. Um, if like a team plays white and team plays black, if you win with white each game, you get three points. Draw is one, obviously lose your zero. But in that same match, if the team playing black or a player playing black wins, they get four points. Mm -hmm. So black is more valuable in terms of winning points. And then the end, whoever has most number of points over the six boards win. Now, if you look at do all calculation, there's only one, uh, uh, one, uh, one scenario where you have a tie. This is all six draws. The moment there is almost no draw in a team. So all teams are going at each other trying to win and that just completely changes the vibe because now teams are no more black is no more defensive it's also more aggressive and uh, they're all looking at each other what's going on and trying to play their own game so it just changes the way a true team sport then in case uh, it comes to four so. individual games but playing as a team playing as a team absolutely and so i noticed uh, looking at the broadcast uh, two um, things sort of uh, made my impact impacted me different to here the first was uh, the vibe of the players especially in the tie breaks they were behind them sitting three plus three and they were sh they're cheering and shouting the other thing was uh, the different colored t-shirts so i'm thinking that there must be some personal branding uh, issue tell us about the personal branding of each of the teams and why you're trying to differentiate them maybe using different t-shirts different colors What's the behind that? So I'll have to take you two steps back. Mm -hmm. The Global Chess League was structured with fans in mind. We borrowed liberally from other leagues and other sports of the world. The coin toss is very common in football and yes. cricket. Um, all whites, all black was something different. A home and away is common in other parts of the world. Team t-shirt colors are part of that. If you look at English Football League, English Premier League or NBA, or they all play with different color t-shirts. That's a distinct identity mm -hmm. gets formed around those colors. As time passes by, each color then becomes that much more important for team owners, team players and fans. And that's the journey that we have just started on. So each team color in that sense 
is is an investment in the future of how fans will recognize the team how they will appreciate and then eventually we want to go in that direction where they start the merchandise comes in all all forms in that sense so that's that's where it has come from and again it's part of the whole architecture of how we get fans into the center what fans think and what they are used to in other games so you'll have a lot of fans who are chess fans but there are other fans who might be a basketball fan or a or a or a cricket fan but they would they are also chess fans mm -hmm. now it this kind of color or toss this gives that bridge for them to walk over said okay hey i know i i, I love basketball but let me check out this mm -hmm. because this also gives the similar vibe of a team can i get behind a team they might have heard of players so mm -hmm. it gives them more reasons to connect and that's the bigger agenda than it follows is can we take chess and get more fans who are sitting on the sidelines to engage and engagement in our view will not happen only for if we talk about the moves or the openings and stuff it's a lot of surround conversations that are important surround conversations on what the points were like who won the toss should they have taken after winning the toss should they have taken white uh, what is the you know what are they looking like and so many other conversations and if that conversation is getting ignited sponsors get excited mm -hmm. because then there is more for sponsors also more, to, engagement. more engagement more engagement means more sponsorship opportunities then sponsors can bring in their own stories to tell through via these engagements so all of this is part of a construct which brings fans to the center of which t-shirt color is just one part so uh, a follow up question to a follow up question to this um, this year there were six teams if i'm not mistaken you were mentioning that uh, the owners of the teams also have other teams in other sports so it's a yes. uh, big picture for next year let's talk about next year i have to understand that the idea is to continue will we be bringing in new teams will the players still stay in the same team or could they be drafted to different teams what's the idea behind there in those two um, questions so i'll answer i'll only answer one out of the three questions because the uh, the global chess league board is discussing the other two so right now i'm i will not be able to share those mm -hmm. conversations but number one as per the architecture of global chess league these teams are bought by private team owners so these six will continue and as part of the roadmap two new teams enter in year 3 two and more. two more will enter in year 3 and two will enter in year 6 and that's how so we want to build this in a more systematic manner so you will see six teams again next year and eight teams in year 3 and then 10 teams in uh, uh, year 6 but i will tell you this after the end of season 1 the number of queries to buy teams has just gone yeah. through the roof there's so much excitement because now uh, you know chess fans uh, who have the means or organizations that support chess now have the means to express mm -hmm. uh, their support and their encouragement of chess in a whole new way that is quite popular if you look at red bull they own a racing team a football yeah. team why not a chess team so you have opportunities like that plus now you can do more with uh more with a team the kind of branding you can do through the year activate activations you can do a lot more be because this format is accepted in almost every major sport of the world um so you will hopefully see a lot more uh, as we go along in this journey in the next few years a lot more organizations lot more companies lot more individuals venture capital funds getting in to see oh, how can they get this uh, piece of the cake so my final question do you think that um this new approach shorter games directed to the broadcast directed to engage fans at some point could overpass the classical fide chess events or do you think they should coexist together chess will coexist together it has been seen in other sports as well that anything like this doesn't actually change what exists in its purest form it only enhances mm -hmm. that um, more fans means more fans to follow the classical as well mm -hmm. more engagement opportunities more engagement opportunities even during classical so i don't see it as either or i see them as an and that i think a lot more fan engagement lot more activation lot more broadcast will bring in more fans and by that logic it can become a huge feeder system to actually the the classics which is the prima donna of chess and it will feed that much more fandom into that rather than actually taking it away samir patak thank you very much samir patak from the global chess league i think it's been a very interesting conversation and already some interesting insights for next year thanks samir thank you very much for having me